I spent seven years starting a company called Quantum Dot Corporation out in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, and we developed new biological detection approaches using semiconductor nanocrystals or quantum dots. Uh, and when that, that company got acquired in 2005, uh, it seemed like a great opportunity for me to get back into academia. Uh, and so I joined the Molecular Biosensors and Imaging Center here at Carnegie Mellon, uh, basically to help run a new program that the NIH had just funded, uh, building hybrid technology that involves organic dyes and genetically targetable modules. So at that point I came in as a chemistry professor here uh, and program manager of this Networks and Pathways Center. Our center is focused on developing new platforms for genetically expressible tools uh, and new ways of detecting changes uh, in cells as they occur. So we develop biological sensors that respond dynamically to changes in their environment. Uh, and that are easily detectable in standard fluorescence microscopy. The work in my lab is focused on um, really two specific areas from a probe development standpoint. Uh, one area we're basically using uh, a new approach to link two fluorescent dye molecules together uh, into a genetically targeted sensor. Uh, that sensor can then provide a robust, easily detectable signal in the microscope uh, on physiological changes near a target site. So we can actually measure pH changes, for example, near a specific protein uh, in the vicinity of a particular genetic target. Uh, and so that allows us to do things like track uh, internalization and recycling dynamics of cell surface proteins, um, through the, through the entire endocytic process uh, using dynamic uh, biological microscopy. Uh, the other aspect of my work is really focused on extending the resolution limits of optical microscopy. So we're developing new fluorescent probes that allow us to visualize molecules uh, in cells at resolutions that approach molecular resolution as opposed to the typical limit of a fluorescence microscope like this uh, where you're limited to visualizing objects on the order of 200 to 300 nanometers in size. Uh, one of them is really focused on uh, extending the resolution of optical microscopy using single molecule approaches. So these new fluorescent probes that we've developed uh, give us the ability to measure single molecules by adding very low concentrations of, of the dye molecule. These low concentrations of dye randomly activate some of the expressed receptor sites, uh, and by individually logging the positions of those activation events, we can get a picture of where all of the molecules are in a living cell. Uh, and so we're working on optimizing those methods and using that to generate very high resolution information about the molecular locations uh, within a cell. Um, another project that's ongoing in the lab uh, and is really driven by a graduate student uh, as well, is using these probes to interrogate aspects of co-translational protein folding. So one of the things that we're particularly interested in is how proteins, while being synthesized by the ribosome, acquire fold and function. Uh, and these genetically expressed probes that we develop provide a unique uh, window of insight into this because they are able to activate while still being synthesized by the ribosome uh, and that allows us to measure the properties of this particular folding event uh, and the properties of the translation process that give rise to proper folding and proper function of proteins. Uh, my lab is four graduate students currently, uh, a staff scientist, a postdoc, and a technician. Uh, and so we're a reasonably, reasonably sized group, so I have a lot of uh, direct contact with all of the students and all of the projects that are there. We are a lab that actually crosses 
many disciplinary boundaries. So students do a variety of things ranging from spectroscopy, synthesis, microscopy, uh, photophysical, photochemical characterization, uh, cell culture, biochemistry, western blotting, protein purification. So uh, there's just a tremendous diversity of techniques that are employed in my lab. Uh, and it depends a lot on the particular approach and the particular problem that's being uh, pursued, exactly which techniques you use. But at its core, uh, microscopy and single molecule microscopy are some of the fundamental uh, anchoring frameworks of our, of our queries. So with regards to our fluorescent probe development, uh, we're definitely trying to move the measurements that can be made now in static samples uh, into living cells so that we can see protein interactions um, as they occur uh, at different stages uh, of cellular behavior. Uh, with regards to our biophysical measurements, we really want to understand the impact of translation rate on things like um, folding and function of nascent proteins as they're still bound to the ribosome and how that's manipulated and controlled by the cell uh, for important physiological processes, for example, growth cone navigation. Our work has been published in journals like Nature Biotechnology, uh, the Journal of the American Chemical Society, Bioconjugate Chemistry, uh, in the Journal of Biomolecular Screening. Uh, one collaboration that we have is with Professor Putin Vedu, uh, and in that collaboration, you know, their lab studies the endocytosis of opioid receptors, uh, and we've developed a pH-sensitive fluorescent probe that allows us to track uh, the process of a, of a receptor through the endocytic pathway uh, as it goes from neutral extracellular environment through acid compartments within the cell and to quantify where it is within that pathway. And so we're working with them to use these probes to assess the, the trafficking dynamically for molecules like the mu and delta opioid receptors. We also have a collaboration with Professor Wolford uh, to assess the translation of particular proteins by the ribosome to see if we can actually correlate the behavior and the dynamics of translation with the acquisition of form and function of, of nascent proteins still bound to the ribosome. Uh, that's a collaboration with Professor Wolford and with Professor Lee in the chemistry department where we need tools for labeling the ribosomes in order to build this kind of biophysical framework uh, to characterize protein folding at a single molecule level. Uh, we have a number of external collaborations, uh, in particular around the area of protein synthesis and degradation, collaboration with Christine Holt and Fred Wouters. Christine Holt is at Cambridge University, Fred Wouters is at the University of Göttingen. Uh, and with those, um, with those colleagues, we're studying uh, the impact of protein synthesis and protein degradation uh, using novel fluorescent probes on axon and growth cone navigation in the optic nerve uh, in frog and fish. Because our lab is an interdisciplinary lab, students can often uh, have to draw from many different fields um, in order to pursue their project. Uh, and so strong biochemistry background and strong cell biology background is key, especially for the microscopy projects. Uh, as well as some background in spectroscopy um, and microscopy, which can be obtained through other courses here at Carnegie Mellon uh, or courses at your own university prior to coming to Carnegie Mellon. Uh, I think one of the real strengths of Carnegie Mellon uh, is that the walls between departments are exceptionally low. Carnegie Mellon really prides itself on the ability of its faculty to collaborate uh, and the ability to put together interdisciplinary collaborations. 